Well, hello again, Pete G Zero PNM here. It's been some time since I last did a video. I think June of last year, 2020, was my last uh, video. I did a Christmas one, of course, just thanking everybody for taking the time to look at my videos. Uh, this one today has been a long time coming. Um, and I know that I've had a few people that have messaged me saying, when are you going to do a video on this key? Well, today is the day. Uh, talking about today, it's the 21st of February 2021, and we're in lockdown number three here in the UK. Um, this key has taken me uh, a little while to get used to. Um, it isn't like using a paddle, but it is the closest key in its class to operate like a paddle key. Um, so if you haven't guessed already, uh, today I'm going to be having a look at my Begali Intrepid. So here's my fantastic uh, Begali Intrepid bug key. Um, I did say in the intro that uh, it took me a little bit of time to get used to operating this key and that is purely down to the fact that uh, coming from an iambic paddle or a single paddle background as most would be um, you have to get used to the fact that you make your own dashes um, and the key will make the dots for you. Now if you have uh, a keen interest in uh, straight key operations as well as paddle key operations then that shouldn't be too much of a difficult thing to do because it's a combination of both you make the, the dashes the key makes the dots for you now interestingly there are actually um, a number of adjustments on this key and I'll show you what they are um, here we go. So this is the Intrepid, uh, the mechanics of the Intrepid. So first up, we have this one here, which is the dot adjustment. Um, actually, in the end of the uh, dot adjustment, there is a, a sprung loaded contact, which helps to provide some force back to this arm um, when you're making the dot contact. Uh, this next adjustment along, is the return force magnet. There's a magnet on the end and you can adjust this to fine tune um, your dot um, manipulation along with another adjustment I'll go through in a minute. This is the uh, dot travel adjustment. So when you're making dots, this is the adjustment for that travel. And you need a fair amount of travel. It's not like having a paddle where you would have point whatever of a millimeter. You need enough force to be able to throw the arm. Uh, this one over here is the dot spacing magnet. So between this one and this one, this is where you would make the fine tuning for your particular style. Uh, along the top then, we have this first one, which is the the dot arm rest position um, and so when you're keying um, that's the dash so dots would be this way this if I move this weight out of the way you will see what I mean so this is the dot resting position so this is where the arm defaults back to once you let it go um, the next one along is the dash contact. So if I move this one out of the way, you can see here when I do the dashes, that is the dash contact. And this one is the dash contact magnet. So that adjusts the force required to make that particular move. These on the top are the um, adjustments to increase or decrease the speed and what I'll do is I will plug the Intrepid into my uh, radio which for the keen-eyed viewers will notice that it's changed it's no longer no longer a Begal uh, sorry a Tentec Orion um, so this is the slowest that you can get 
Now if I move both of these out, turn the volume up on the radio slightly. Oh, I want it wrong one. Here we go. And then you can increase the speed by moving the weights in towards the center position. And then the fastest would be this position. So those of you who like um, QRQ or high speed operations, then you will see that that's a way to adjust the speed. I, su I suppose you could actually take off one of these adjustments um, by sliding it off the end, but um, by having two on there, you have a greater range of flexibility. Another thing you'll notice in comparison to say um, a Vibroplex bug key is that um, on a Vibroplex, the arm moves this way. Um, whereas this one, it's this way. So if I move it back to where I generally have it, you'll see that um, that's a nice speed, but that arm is fixed at this end and vibrates this way, whereas the, the uh, vibroplexes are generally the other way around. So, um, dimensions then get my trusty ruler out the uh, the length of the key the base is about 160 millimeters um, actually it's a little less than that about 157 millimeters uh, long the width of the key is um, is 75 millimeters and the height of the key is just under 60 millimeters, so about 58 millimeters. And the weight, I uh, don't have my my um, sheet here, but it weighs about three pounds, four pounds. It's very heavy. Um, and you'd have to give it some real force to move it on the desk, I can tell you. Um, unlike a um, your normal iambic paddle, it's uh, uh, positive and negative. And of course your radio would be on a um, straight key setting because you're you're doing all the work um, for for the radio so i haven't put a pigtail on this one this one um, i've just left with the, the cable um, connected and it's actually connected to the front of my uh, radio so what i'll do then is i will uh, connect it up to the radio um i'll have a tune around see if i can find a contact and uh, we'll see if we can see what it's like in a QSO. Okay, there's a contest on today. So um, I've gone on to 30 meters, um, 10.123.5, which is around the, um, the bug frequency, the bug users group frequency of 10.123. So I'll give a CQ call and um, we'll see uh, how we go. Well, I guess it wasn't to be, um, and unfortunately that's the way that um, the majority of my calls are. Um, everybody's on the uh, non-WARC bands uh, for this contest, it appears, but um, 
there we go at least you got to have a look at the uh, wonderful Begali Intrepid um, I'll just bring up their website so I can give you some further details on the key if you just uh, stand by for one second um, where are we the Intrepid here we go so the current price of the Intrepid is 455 euros um, bear in mind it's plus 22% uh, tax and shipping um, there is a video clip by Carlo Consoli um, IK0 YGJ a friend of mine uh, fellow FOC operator and um, he's done a video which actually goes through the setting up of the key um, and uh, more in depth on, um, on, on all the adjust different adjustments and what I'll do is I'll put a link to his video down in the description um, of, the, uh, of this video uh, so um, it says uh, I'll give you a description of what it says on the website the design of the semi-automatic keys has changed very little since Horace Martin sold his first bug more than a hundred years ago the Intrepid, however, introduces a distinct new architecture that breaks this mould. The return forces are dampening and produced by magnets for the utmost inconsistency and durability. The single machined arm is held by precision bearings for a reliably smooth action and the design ensures that it always returns to the exact same neutral position. The precision adjustments are embedded in two gold-plated walls, which also protect the mechanism. The horizontal pendulum, which produces the dits of a Morse character, is actuated by an ingenious lever mechanism and it faces towards the operator. This is what I was describing in the video about it being uh, the opposite to a, a vibroplex. The sliding weights allow you to adjust the speed from about 18 to more than 40 words per minute. The base of this key is made by melting and casting phosphatized iron. As a result, no two bases will be identical, even though the overall shape and dimensions ensured by the mold. The rough, uneven surface with individual patterns is characteristic for this process. The Intrepid, with its distinct cast iron base, it is a heavy weight of about six pounds, so it's even heavier than I thought it was. It weighs six pounds. And then it gives a link to the Begali Intrepid on the Eham page. Uh, they do say, before placing the order for the Intrepid, we suggest sending them an email to verify if the item is available and if the delivery time is acceptable. So it's um, 455, sorry, which includes shipping. And you can specify left hand or right hand, uh, depending on which hand you're dominant with. So there we go. That's the Begali Intrepid. Um, I do have uh, another video coming up very soon. I've recently got back into the shack my uh, Graciella, which I'll be doing a video on very soon. And um, also arriving this week from a friend of mine who's decided to sell it. And obviously it's going to come to my shack. I've bought it from him is the uh, Begali Expedition in turtle shell finish, which I'm looking forward to receiving and trying that. So uh, there we are. So thanks very much for watching the video. I hope that's given you a better insight into the Begali Intrepid. It's certainly a great key to use. And uh, if you do buy one, or if you have one already, or you use another bug, please, please give some consideration to um, joining the uh, bug users group. And you can find them on the internet uh, at groups.io forward slash g forward slash b u g that's the bug users group um, which is purely for people who um, use a bug the majority of the time now i know you can see the simplex pro plugged in behind there but for the last three months two months three months or whatever it is the, um, the Intrepid has been my key of choice. So there we go. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos and get notifications. Don't forget to click the bell. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again next time. So this is G0PNM, Pete saying 73s, and I'll catch you on the bands. Take care. Bye-bye.